Hosea chapter 2. Say ye unto your brethren, the Jew, Am I my people? And to your sister, Ruma, probably a better way of saying it, having obtained pity, the names they are, plead with your mother, Gomer, who is a type of Israel. Plead. You know what a plead is? You really want something? For she is not my wife. Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight, and her adulteries from between her breasts. Romans 7, 1 to 3. God doesn't acknowledge this woman as the wife, or as the husband. Even though he told Hosea to go and marry her. When somebody steps out their marriage bed, God doesn't honor it. It's over. Jesus said, except, you know, for adultery. Understand that death dissolves the marriage. Unto death do you part. Divorce in the Bible, fornication, Matthew 19, 1 through 9, breaks the marriage. Again, like I said, death, Romans 7, 1 through 3. And when an unbeliever departs, 1 Corinthians 7, 15. It looks like that this woman, Gomer, has even stepped out on Hosea. She's been unfaithful, as Israel has been unfaithful to God, presently as Hosea is writing. Least I strip her naked. Well, she's been naked before. All kinds of men, all kinds of, of lovers. But God will strip her naked before all. Listen, this is not American Hollywood where it's done on the television set. This woman would sneak off in the corner. She would have a tire, the Bible says, of a harlot. And then go in private chambers. This was not something done out in the open. And yet we're going to see America in this chapter, but this is not like you see on television. But God is going to put her before all. And set her as in the day that she was born, naked. Limited clothes. <laughs> and make her as a wilderness, unfruitful, producing nothing. What she produces is filth and sin. And set her like a dry land. What can you grow in a dry land? Aren't we supposed to produce fruit? And slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children. And we saw that with the first daughter that was born. No mercy. For they be the children of whoredom. And this is a whoredom away from God. And we're going to see in a minute. Sleeping with God's small g. You don't have to have a sexual sin to be a whore in the Bible. If you got other gods, God considers you a whore. Baseball. The theater. Cards, posters, signatures, books, magazines. They don't have to be undressed. For you to be a whore to them. They can be perfectly dressed. For their mother has played the harlot. She has conceived them. She that conceived them has done shamefully. There's no shame in America. For she said, now watch the me, myself, and I. Watch the pronoun. I will go after my lover. And give me my bread and my water my wool, my flax, my oil, and my drink. My, 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 me, 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 my, my, me, me, my, 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 my. Those are words of a whore. Therefore, behold, I, God, will hedge up thy way with thorns. Ouch. He's going to make her naked, then he's going to put a, a thorny bush in the way. And make a wall. Right? If you get by the thorns, then it's going to be a wall. And she shall not find her path, Lamentation 3, 7. Stop right where you go. You go to jail, you don't pass go. Go strictly to jail, don't roll no dice, and don't play, pay no money. You just stay there. 
And everybody goes around the board. Ha ha, look at that whore. Ha ha, look at that whore. Look what she's done to, to God. But the problem is when Judah came around the board, every time he went to that jail spot, he saw Israel there. Ooh, that looks good. That ought not been the way that Judah should have taken. And she shall follow after her lovers. But she shall not overtake them. She shall seek them. But shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then was it better with me than now. Lesson. I don't want to sin. But sin doesn't pay. And it does not pay to live in sin. And God will let you go. After he warns you. He'll warn you like he's warning Israel. And they still kept on going. So said, okay, fine, go. Then the money ran out. This is like the prodigal son chapter of the Old Testament. Lived on the wire, lived on the money, lived on the, the hogs. What am I going to do now? The prodigal son said, I go back to my father. The, the woman said, I want to go back to my husband. It wasn't so good, was it? And when you venture out, you get a lot more luggage, a lot more baggage than when you started out. For she did not know that I, God, gave her corn. I thought it was her corn. Now, this is where America is right now. It's her corn. It didn't come from God. What percentage of Americans actually bow their head earnestly and thank God before their meal? And why? What brewery thanks God for the water and the, and the ingredients to make their booze? But God gave the grapes to make the wine. But she said, oh, it's my wine, my drink. No, you're wrong. It's God's. And oil, she said, it's my oil. No. And this would be olive oil. So this would be plants and trees that God has provided in the land. And multiply her silver. God gave her silver and gold. You know what America's lost? They lost their silver and gold. You know what the people lost? They lost their silver for a piece of paper. You know who did that? God did that. Why? Because it's, it's mine. God says, I'll show you how much it's yours. Now watch this. Which they prepared for capital B bail. Polluted. Everything that God gave them, gave her, she gave to Baal. And what is Baal in America? Esther. The Christmas child. Tamu. Satan's God comes in all names. That's not Jehovah. There are people that give money and give their, their goods and give whatever they have to a fallen God and not to God. Some of it's called a dog. Some of it's called to a cat. There's more money spent on dogs and cats than there is for missionaries in America. I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about the world. Figure it out. Therefore... Here comes the judgment beginning. Proverbs 6, 29 and 35. Here comes the judgment. I, therefore will I return. Where did he go? He left her. And take away my corn, God speaking, in the time thereof. There's going to be no corn when it's supposed to be harvest. You're going to go out there harvest time. It's dead. It's too wet. The bugs got to it. My wine in the season thereof. And listen, when the grapes are bring forth, the Bible speaks of that was a time of celebration. When, when the Mediterranean area produces their grapes and it's time of, of picking grapes and a time to making wine, man, they're just, it is just a rejoiceful time. And you go out there and there's nothing. And we'll recover my wool. That's the sheep. 
something's going to happen to the sheep and my flax. That's the that's the plan given to cover her nakedness. You know how she's going to become naked in this chapter we read? God's going to take away the resources. <coughs> she's been giving it away. She's been using it for Baal and not for God because, okay, call it El Nemo. Call it Global War. Call it whatever you want to call it, but I'm taking it away. America hasn't learned that yet. America reads, needs to read Hosea too. And now will I discover her lewdness. Ezekiel 16 and 23. In the sight of her lovers. And none shall deliver her out of my hand. God, you ain't going to... Do whatever you want. You ain't going to help her. Remember, she had no mercy. I am not her God. You don't ever want to become in this condition. When God puts you up on the highest shelf possible, to, and when he walks by, he doesn't even see you. You're up there on the top shelf. Hey, God! Oh, there's a nice vessel. Hey, I clean this thing up, me. Hosea, you want to write some more for me? Sure. What about the what about Israel? I don't see him. Well, something you don't want God to put you on a shelf. You're done. And you may get something in your life that you really need God to answer. You really need help. You get God that angry. I don't know if there's any other help. Jonah was left with. I'm angry at God, and that's it. That's how that cha that's how that book that's how that chapter ends. I'm angry with you, God. Meanwhile, Nineveh is rejoicing and, and just pleading to God. And now I will discover her lewdness. Verse eleven: I will also cause all her mirth. That's rejoicing. Like I said, when the time of the grapes and wine, they're just having a great old time. David was was having a lively dance and enjoying bringing the ark in to cease. Her feast days were a great time. The three times a year were all the males to come. We know they were even allowed to drink before the Lord, but they were allowed to drink then. They could buy whatever their heart's desire was when they came to Jerusalem. Her new moons, that's the first of every month was a, was a rejoiceful time. Her Sabbaths, that's a time you just sit down with your family and don't do nothing. The wife don't cook. The children don't work. You don't go out and do anything. Except for, may I see what about you feed the animals. Or if an animal got in trouble, health-wise, or, you know, uh, circumcision. Well, man, you just sit around and, and been with the family and go to, go to services, learn about God. That was supposed to be a joyful time. All her solemn feasts. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees. There's your wine and oil. Olive oil. Whereof she has said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given. You know what she was saying? She was saying Baal was giving her that. She was saying the product of evolution has given her everything. She was discounting and not giving God the reward or the honor as creator. Do you know a country that's doing that? China gives us our rice. If it wasn't for China, we wouldn't have the food that we have. And other countries say, wasn't for the corn of America, we wouldn't say, no, what about God? These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, a lot of trees, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. I will visit upon her the days of Baal, Judges 2.11, Numbers 25, wherein she burned incense to them. Gods. They were supposed to burn incense in one place to one god, and they were only the priest. They're burning it to other gods. Baal is Baal, plural. Baal is the male god. Asherah is the female god. Balaam is the little baby gods. 
Baal is the sun god. Astroth is the moon god. And the planets and the stars are the Baalims. It's a sex worship. So when Aaron made that little calf, they had their little sex orgy. It's just a sex worship. You know, you know what our God and of our Bible lacks when it comes to worship? Sex. Even when we came to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, no sex involved. Virgin birth. Read about the Roman and Greek gods. This God slept with this woman. That guy slept with this God. This God slept with that God. Ba ba boo ba boo. Where is she? Uh, and she decked herself with earrings. Earrings don't have a good condemnation in the Bible. And her jewels make herself look at me. Look at all the jewels that I got. And she went after her lovers and forgot me, saith the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allure. That's nice. And I love, that word's always interesting to me. Allure. It's like mirth. I always thought mirth was something bad until I looked it up. Allure her. Ezekiel 20 to 36, Revelation 12, 14. And bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. Three and a half years. You now see we are in the midst of the tribulation period. The Antichrist has taken it all. I forget which chapter that is, where every product is mentioned. Even the souls and slaves of men are given to the Antichrist. For the price of the 666, the mark. I, I, I'm going to write that chapter down because I'm always reference. We're always going to see that chapter come up when it comes to goods, needs, and profit and, and uh, store. The great big store coming up is the Antichrist store. Everything you're going to need has to come through him. And we just seen it. And they're all going to give credit to the Antichrist. Except for when the Jews realize who the Antichrist really is, then Jesus says, flee. And I will give her her vineyards from thence. The millennium. And the valley of Achor, which means trouble. Joshua 7.26, Isaiah 65.10. For a door of hope. Trouble becomes a door of hope. The troubler, you read about him? The Antichrist, thy rod and I, my rod and thy staff shall comfort me. The Antichrist, in his ultimate power to kill all the Jews, will drive the Jews to Jesus Christ. And she shall sing there, as in the days of her youth. Miriam singing at the victory, the Red Sea. As David bringing in the ark, as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. So, when Miriam sang, and they had the Song of Moses. The Song of Moses is mentioned in the book of Revelation. That time when, when they got victory over the Egyptians at that Red Sea, it's going to happen again. That singing and dancing, that happiness, that joy over the enemy. Pharaoh tells you here that he's a type of the Antichrist. And after... The Antichrist falls. There's no wilderness journey. It's right to the land of Goat, the land of Canaan, which is God's land given to the Jew, with the Lord Jesus Christ traveling the, the highway. And shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that there shall call me Ishai, my husband, and shall call me no more Belai. My Lord. So you see Baal? Baal is Lord. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth. And they shall no more be remembered by their name. False religions destroyed. Revelation 17 through 19. And in that day I will make a covenant with them. With the beasts of the field. With the fowls of heaven. With the creepy things in the ground. So there's going to be beasts. There's going to be falls. There's going to be creepy things in the millennium. And I will break the bow and the sword. No more war. And battle out of the earth. And will make them to lie down safely. No more war. Isaiah 2.4. Micah 4.3. 
the end of war. How do you get rid of wars? Jesus Christ sitting as king. And I will betroth, marry thee unto me forever. That's it. There's a covenant. In the millennium, God will marry Israel, make them right, give them a new heart, give them a new spirit, and they'll be married forever. And they'll never commit whoredoms or adultery again against God. I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment, in loving kindness and in mercy. Judgment. Some of them are going to go to hell. Righteousness. You got to do right. You got to do what God expects from you. Loving kindness, for God so loved the world, God's not willing that any should bear. God has set his heart to be the apple of the eye of his people, Israel, and in mercies. Mercies he's going to take them. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, remarriage, and thou shalt know the Lord. There is a remarriage in the law. You know what the law stated? If a woman left her first husband and went to a second husband and married him, and for whatever reason, she was divorced from that second man. He, She was not to return to the first man. That was an abomination. God honors a remarriage more than the first marriage, according to the law. But here, God, this woman has stepped out. She has married another. She is, she is a whore. And God has taken them back. He said, well, how can he do that in violation of his law? These are Jews that have not stepped out on him. All the ones that have stepped out on him have been placed into hell. These are the ones that he set a covenant with them. These are the, probably the 144,000 and those that are guided under them. Hey, don't serve that God. They have not been defiled. They are clean. They are ready to be married, a group of people, Israel. So there's no violation of the law here. And it shall come to pass in that day. No, in that day. It's another phrase you should mark in your Bible. I will hear, God speaking, saith the Lord. I will hear from the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. Regeneration of the earth, Matthew 19, 28. That's the millennium. And the earth shall hear the corn. Hear the corn? There are some say that if you can go out in the field and you can actually hear the sprouts breaking through the, the ground, you can hear grow. That's what I'm told. I don't know. And the wine. The wine would be cheerfulness. Wine maketh man a merry heart. And the oil makes glad the face. And they shall hear Jezreel. And Jezreel back here went to uh, chapter 1. Um, I don't have a name for him. Jezreel. That's an important place because that's what's happened in Joshua. That's what happened in Jehu. Gonna happen again. History's going to repeat itself. I will sow her unto me in the earth. I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. There's a group of Jews that did not receive mercy. Hosea 1. Because they have violated their marriage to their husband, God, by whoredom. There is a new group of Jews that come up and have been faithful to God. And God will return the mercy to them that do right. And I will say to them which are not my people, those have violated their love of God. Thou art my people to those who are doing right by God. And they shall say, Thou art my God. Well, the ones in chapter 1 and half of chapter 2 will not say that thou art my God. Baal's my God. Me, myself, and I are my God. So there's no violation of law. There's coming a day when you read this chapter and understand there is coming a group of people of Israel, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they're going to stand pure in the eyes of God. 
And they're going to acknowledge God one day as that's my God. And that's only my God. And I am going to do no service to anybody but to God. And boy, is that going to make God happy. And Satan will be bound for a thousand years and after that cast him to the lake of fire. And the Antichrist helps God by driving these Jews to do right. Isn't that amazing? Tell that to Satan. Hey, Satan, you're going to help. He has no understanding. Understanding is what you do with what you know and the wisdom that you have applied to God. Satan has all kinds of knowledge. He has all kinds of wisdom, but he doesn't understand. He's going to drive those Jews away. He's going to drive them to God. 